Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. Uh, <laughs> this is a, uh, a small plastic shot glass, uh, as you can see. It's uh, four cubic centimetres, and you might be thinking, why on earth have I got this? Have I taken to the bottle? No, I have not. Um, there is a competition uh, in one of the Facebook modelling groups that I'm a member of, and the idea of the competition is to scratch build something using a plastic cup. So I thought I would have a go at this competition and this is the cup that I have chosen to use. Um, and I thought it might be uh, a bit of fun for everybody uh, to film what I'm doing and you know you, you can all sort of come along on the ride. So that's what we're going to do today, make something out of this. Now I've decided to do a diorama and I'm going to use one of these photo frames. You've seen me make uh, dioramas with these before. Uh, and I thought this would be the ideal size. Uh, this one came from the pound shop. It's, it's, you know, it says two pack. You get two of them for a pound. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer really. Um, and what I thought I would do uh, is use my cup and I thought I'd make a little like bunker slash shelter thing uh, on here and then decorate it accordingly. Um, so, yeah, I think that'll work. I, I, I don't really have any real plan. We're gonna kind of make this up as we go along. Um, but we'll see how it turns out. So I've done a bit of prep work. Um, I've painted the cup black. Uh, I just sprayed it with a matte black out of a rattle can um, just to give it something for whatever finish we put on to try and stick to a little bit better, so that's that. Um, another thing I did was I took the frame apart and I've sprayed the glass with the same matte black. Um, just blasted a quick coat on it, it's not actually come out very well, but it's, um, it'll do for what we're doing. Um, and the reason I did that was, if I don't, I don't know if you remember in the last video when I used one of these, uh, it was an absolute bugger getting anything to stick to the glass. So hopefully this will give it um, something for, the, for whatever subsequent layers to stick to. Um, the other thing I've done is there was a, uh, like a stand leg on the back of this on a little metal hinge that I've taken off uh, so that the, the, so the frame will lay flat on the ground. And the part of the hinge that I took off, which is this little metal, metal gadget here, um, I was going to throw it away, but, you know, never throw anything away. I think what I might do actually is paint this up, uh, make it look a bit rusty and battered and whatever, and just put it on the diorama somewhere, you know, might as well. Um, so now we can kind of make a start. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this uh, cup in, I'm going to cut a piece off so it sits flat. And I think we'll do that next. Right, I've just put a bit of masking tape around the edge of this just to give me a guide to cut along. And to cut it off, I'm going to use this. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a cut-off wheel. Uh, they're known in engineering circles as death wheels uh, for very good reason. They have an annoying tendency to snap and send pieces of shrapnel flying in all directions. So if you're going to use something like this, wear safety glasses because believe me you do not want a piece of this going in your eye okay so there you go right with that let's cut it in half Alright, that wasn't too bad. Now you see all these bits of plastic that came flicking off? They might just look like little fragments of plastic, but any one of those, you get it in your eye, it will blind you. So yeah, safety glasses, they are your friend. Right, now to make the front of our building, I've got this piece of uh, styrene uh, card, uh, it's uh, quarter mil I think. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to stick the cup onto it like that, uh, and then when it's dry, I'll cut around it, and that'll give us the front of the building. Right, 
Right, we'll leave that to dry and then we'll cut it out. Right, this is dry now. Uh, I've cut around it uh, with a pair of scissors and then given it a light sanding just so that it's uh, got some a nice smooth edge. What I'm going to do now is make uh, some bits to go on the front, like a door and stuff like that. Um, it's not actually going to open or anything, uh, but it will just be like applied to the surface, so it looks like a door. Um, so I'll do that next, and I might do some bits on the side windows and whatnot as well. So again, it'll all be out of styrene and other bits and pieces, whatever I've got to hand. I'm just going to score a line down the middle of this just to uh, to provide some detail for like the door jam. So I haven't cut right through, I've literally just scored a line. And again, I'm not measuring any of this, I'm just eyeballing it. Now I'll make a, like a frame to go around it. Uh, this is some, um, I think it's 1.5 by 1 mil styrene, so I'll use this to make a door frame. I'm just going to sand the paint off where I'm putting the window on because um, this paint doesn't really work well with the glue. Right, so there's the door and the window. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this old cotton bud, snip the end off, snip a piece off it and use it to make like a little chimney stack thing. Right, so that's the house, shelter, whatever it is, um, done. I've put a, a, a blanking plate over there. It's going to be like a, a plate that folds up to cover the window. Put a couple of chimney pots on the top, added a little bit more detail to the door. Um, so I'm just about ready to paint this now. But before I do, I've got a few other bits. Um, I've got this lump of metal, which we mentioned earlier, which was one of the hinges from the picture frame. And I've also got all this stuff here. Now this is all... Um, offcuts and bits and pieces um, from 3D printing uh, like all supports and, and rafts and whatnot. Um, these are from a, a filament printer and this one's from a, a resin printer um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna paint up a few bits of these as well and use those as kind of like scatter um, so I think they'll look quite good so I think what I'm gonna do is give everything a, a primer coat first and then we'll go on to coloring it from there
Right, this is dry now, so it obviously needs a bit of colour on it because otherwise it looks a bit, well, snowy. <laughs> so what I've got here is some um, uh, acrylic paint, it's uh, yellow ochre. I'm going to thin it down, um, put a drop of isopropyl alcohol in it as a flow improver and basically give it like a, a fairly heavy wash over the top. Right, um, in this little pot here, I've got a mixture of um, chalk and fuller's earth. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dust this over the model and then blow it off to just give the whole thing a really dusty look. Um, I'm going to take this outside and do it because it's going to make a hell of a mess. <laughs> so I'll bring it back and show you once I've done. But basically I'm just going to tip this all over and then just blow the excess off with the airbrush. Actually, before I blew it off, I looked at it and I actually, <laughs> I actually like the way it looks like this. So I think what I'm going to do is just put some, um, put some scenery glue on it and, and just stick it down like that. I think that looks pretty good. Right, I like the way this is looking, but I'm not overly happy with the colour. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another wash, but this time with burnt sienna. Uh, and what I'm going to do is make quite a thin wash uh, and put it over the whole thing to try and sort of unify it all a little bit because it's a bit patchy at the moment. <laughs> nearly forgot to turn the camera on um, so yeah I've mixed this up this has got quite a lot of alcohol in it as well to act as a flow improver um, and I'm just dropping it on all over and then going over it with a brush just to make sure it doesn't pull too much But this is doing a really nice job of um, unifying all the colours. And it's also, the nice thing about it is it's a bit darker. The other, um, the burnt sienna on its own was a bit too yellow. Um, and I wanted it a little bit darker than that and this is working quite nicely. So, One more thing I'm going to do before this paint dries completely. I've got here this, um, it's Woodland Scenics uh, Burnt Grass, which may sound like an odd choice, but I'm going to put it on, put a little bit on now, not a great deal, just a little bit, and it will soak up the paint and, uh, and take on the colour of the paint with any luck. So I'm just going to put a little bit on, just to give it a little bit of interest. I mean, obviously, I don't want it to look like a, you know, a field, but at the same time, it's like even in the desert, you get lichen and stuff growing on rocks, so. Yeah, it's not looking too bad, actually. As I say, most of it's getting soaked up by the paint. So, 
and if it goes on any bits that don't have paint on then when it's dry I can just blow it away that will do I think that looks pretty good actually I quite like that while that's drying I'm going to try a little experiment I've got a piece of um, seafoam grass here uh, I've got a bag of this stuff so this is just a piece I picked out of the bag and I'm going to try and make a little bush out of it so what I'm going to do so I'm going to spray it with some of this uh, contact glue and then dip it in these mixed herbs so let's give it a go and see what happens I'm going to spray it outside because I don't want the glue going everywhere in the workshop right so that's sprayed with glue and what I'm going to do now I'll do it over the lid so it doesn't go everywhere is sprinkle some of these mixed herbs over it I quite like that. I might put that on. <laughs> okay, what I've done now is uh, I've just taken the glass back out of the frame because um, I want to clean up around the edges here a little bit um, and touch it in so that it you don't end up with this like dirty border around the edge. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray over it with a, a suitable colour. Um, just to blend it so that when it goes back in the frame there are no, it doesn't look like scruffy around the edges. Right, I forgot to film that, but yeah, basically I just sprayed it with some matte varnish. Now I'm going to let it dry. Um, there's a couple more bits I want to do before it goes back together, but we're, we're getting near the end now. So one final thing I want to do, uh, where these barrels are, and it's why I left this bit clear, I want to put a little puddle of, well, goo. Um, so I'm going to use this Citadel Putrid Green, because it's quite neon and disgusting. Um... But the trouble is with this paint is it's it's matte. So I'm going to add a drop of this to it, which is um, Windsor Newton Gloss Medium. I've had this pot for years. <laughs> um, and I found it in the back of a cupboard the other day and I thought, I'd, why don't I ever use this? So yeah, this is the perfect thing for it. So I'm going to mix some of this with some of the paint and then hopefully when it dries, it will be glossy. So, I mean, this is what... Um, paint mediums are made for they're basically you add pigment to them and then they give you they basically make paint so I'll give that a little bit more of a mix oh yeah I like that <laughs> yeah that looks great Yeah, that looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah, well pleased with that. Excellent. Right. Um, now we can just let everything dry and do the final assembly. Right, I'm not sure what's happened here, but uh, it looks like the varnish has reacted with something and has gone white which is not very useful um, so we'll have to try and fix that uh, I was going to put some more pigments on anyway so I'll put some pigments on and see what that looks like so I've got a couple of uh, pigments here from MIG um, 
I got these a long time ago. Uh, I generally make my own pigments now, but I've got these, so I might as well use them. Um, so this is Gold Force Sand and Rubble Dust. <laughs> I love how they spelt rubble. Uh, anyway, um, let's start with some sand. It's funny the way this um, varnish has reacted because there are certain parts um, that are they're absolutely fine. I think it's something to do with the the type of paint that's underneath it or the type of finish that's underneath it. Because, um, for example, the the shelter itself is absolutely fine. The barrels are fine. This is fine. Um, so it seems like over where it's gone over the acrylic paint, it's been fine. But where it's gone over some of the other uh, paints that I've used, it doesn't like it, so I'll have to keep that in mind in the future. Right, I think that will do. So the last thing I need to do now is just seal all of this to keep everything in place and I think that will be us done. And here is the finished article. Uh, I'm really pleased with how this came out actually considering everything that's on there is stuff that would probably otherwise have been thrown away. Uh, there are some bits of metal sprue, there are some uh, failed 3D prints, there's some old support material from 3D prints. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much all stuff that would normally just get biffed. So, yeah, it just goes to show with a, a bit, of, uh, bit of imagination you can come up with all kinds of things. And it also is a perfect excuse to never throw anything away. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I hope this was uh, of interest to you. It's uh, been a fun little diversion for me. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.